Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna, if this is your first time here. I'm a freelance makeup artist based out of Michigan. And today we are going to be recreating a very sought after makeup look, the Sabrina Carpenter Glam. It's very glowy. I like to think of this more of a glam version of clean girl makeup that everybody loves, but is not ideal for all day wear or events that you want to go to. So this one is a step up from that because you're really using much more face products and powder, even though it doesn't seem like it. Everybody thinks it's very natural, but what we've classified as clean girl makeup with like everything being like slippery and yes, it looks healthy. It's not very applicable to everyone. And the beauty of this makeup look, there's shimmer all over. Whereas typically to make the makeup look balanced, you would go for, for example, shimmer on the eyes and a matte lip or like really glossy skin and a matte lip. But in her case, the way her makeup artist does it, Carolina Gonzalez, I believe her name is, she focuses the shimmer everywhere. So she's got shimmer on her eyes, a really glowy base, and a glossy lip. For the makeup look that a lot of people want to go for, I would really, 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 really also like to stress the importance of lighting when you see these pictures online yes her makeup is flawless like there is no denying that but at the same time the exact angle that they're taking the picture the flash the team behind the camera who's holding the camera where and when the flash hits the exact perfect moment to show the makeup that you are looking at is not realistic and i just want to say that i'm going to say that over and over again because i know that i do that too for my own clients that i want to create the most perfect picture so i wanted to show a very subtle difference between two pictures of the same event that she had so one of the pictures is from instagram her makeup artist took it with her lighting and then the other is on the red carpet again the makeup looks beautiful in both but i just want to bring awareness to the fact that lighting plays such a role in how the makeup looks, especially the skin. And I'm filming this in front of my large window where it's cloudy today, so you will get to see the makeup how it truly is. And I've already prepped my skin with my Fenty Fat Water Toner Inky List Omega Water Cream. I have been loving this duo because it's perfectly balanced for my skin. I have dry skin, so it doesn't leave any greasy layer, but as you can see, it still has a little bit, a little bit of reflection. And I've let it sit enough so that the makeup doesn't interact with it too much. Now let's get on to the makeup. We are going to start off with a glowy base, of course, and I'm gonna achieve that using the L'Oreal Lumi Glotion. I really do love this stuff, and if you properly moisturize your skin underneath, you can get away with just using this. Because the pearlescence is so fine, it doesn't create any enhancement of texture. I am going to use for my foundation the Makeup Forever Reboot just to slightly even out the skin tone. I'm not gonna use it to overly cover or create a layer of foundation, but you have to remember that foundation is used to even out the skin tone, not to perfect the skin. For me, I have a little bit of discoloration in spots like right here on my cheeks. So that's where I like to focus the pigment and then even out my nose. That's why I don't think it's very important to have a full coverage foundation. Like you just need a light medium coverage and then you can let your full coverage concealer do the work that's the whole point because think about it like foundation the base concealer to conceal certain areas you don't want it to use it all over unless it's like every day and if you feel more comfortable using only concealer across your face then go ahead and do that because it does feel a little bit more breathable for every day but like i said this is a step up from that clean girl makeup look that we're used to seeing everywhere. This foundation is light enough in coverage so that you don't have to apply it all over your skin. You can really stretch it out and it won't look like there's a disconnect between your face and your neck. All right, this is a close-up of the skin. As you can see, still there are spots of discoloration that I haven't covered, but we're gonna use concealer to take care of that. Now I'm actually gonna let my foundation sit a little bit and move on to the eyes. I'm gonna first use my Urban Decay Primer Potion, especially if you're trying to recreate this type of makeup look for every day or even a nighttime event, but you're not used to wearing a lot of makeup. I think this is very important and less intimidating than, for example, going in with concealer and powder that we often teach to prime the eyelids because it can seem very heavy. Let this sit literally for 20 seconds so that it creates that soft matte base. And then I'm gonna go in with my Makeup by Mario palette, the original one, because I was going to use the Ethereal Eyes one, which is perfect for this makeup. And if you have it, let me just 
point to the colors that I would use, these two right here, very slightly. And if you want to make it darker, this one on the outer corner and some of that shimmer all over the lid. I'm going to take a light color all over the lid first. And then you can take a neutral transition color like this. It's going to go right here on the outer corner and blending up towards the brow bone. We're also going to take this color and work it along the lower lash line. Now I'm going to go in with the Milani Stellar Lights Rose Glow Highlighter Palette. This is extremely pigmented. So we are going to go in with a fluffier brush so that it's not as intense. We're going to start right here on the inner corner of the eye because her makeup artist really opens up her eyes a lot. If you have hooded eyes like me, make sure to bring it over the crease as well, not just right here on the lid. All right, so what I've done so far is added a little bit of concealer underneath my eyes, and then I went in with a tad bit of my Rare Beauty Happy Liquid Blush mixed in with my concealer. and started pressing it right almost all the way up to my under eyes. I'm gonna add more, but with powder blush instead. I'm going to start building up the mascara, starting from my lash line all the way up. You want to kind of stamp it when you approach the lash line because it'll sort of create a liner effect and bring some more framing or dimension to the look because everything is so light and bright. You do want to have some sort of definition somewhere. So this is where we're going to do it with some mascara. Next, I'm going to go in with this Rimmel London Nude Liner. You kind of want to make sure it's dry a little bit, take a Q-tip or something so that the liner sticks a little bit better. And by going in with your mascara wand like this, perpendicular instead of along the lash line, you're clumping them together a bit and further enhancing that like doll-like look. Incredible, yeah, I'm just gonna add that right there. Eyeliner is done, it's very subtle, but it does make a difference, especially if you use black. Um, if you have lighter eyes and you are intimidated by black liner or you don't want something as heavy or harsh, go for something like a charcoal gray and or brown, of course. All right, now we can move on to the rest of the skin. As I mentioned before, I have dry skin, so I can get away with not powdering, but I know a lot of people have oily skin, so how I would approach this glowy base while still keeping my oiliness at bay. First of all, I would have gone with the Tatcha Silk Canvas Primer, the one that's liquid. I've used so many oil controlling primers in my kit on clients, and yes, it has a lot to do with your application, but I feel like that one is foolproof. Every single time I use it, it's it sits beautifully on the skin and it interacts well with any type of foundation that I use on top. But with any primer that you use, less is more. I learned that the hard way because the more you use, it's not going to control your oils more or it's not going to blur your skin more. It's just going to create a thicker layer so that your other face products start slipping around and it just does not create a good base. A little tip that I like to use um, if you notice that your blush doesn't last long throughout the day is actually going in with your blush before you've powdered your skin because it's tacky from the foundation and any cream product that you use is kind of going to grip onto it. You want to go in with a fluffier brush so that it doesn't create like a patchy application. So the way that this brush is cut and the shape of it is going to allow for a perfect and even application on my cheek just like that. So I'm going to go in with my Scott Barnes blush palette and the color Rose, which is this one right here. It's a very cool tone pink. And as you can see, it's very pigmented. I'm going to first off dab off any excess on the palm of my hand. And this is for controlling the amount of product you use and also it's going to help create an even application on the brush so that when you go on onto your cheeks, you're just basically pressing it when I even go on my under eyes because I haven't powdered my under eyes yet. So by the time I do set my under eyes, it's gonna create a very nicely diffused gradient between the powder and the powder blush itself. And you know, she has a very like a doll-like look, so we're going to focus it even on the apples of our cheeks. Despite what we've been like seeing as trends with focusing it on the temple, we're gonna go right here. And don't be afraid to go all over because once again, we haven't powdered yet. And then one of my favorite products, like literally ever, like literally ever, the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter. I will never run out of this because look, at, I've had it for like, for sure three years and nothing has happened to it. So I'm going to take this on that same brush actually and 
go all over my cheeks. It is not glittery, only glowy. It's so beautiful, it's so beautiful. And I actually wouldn't use this like with a small blending brush, how we typically see with highlighter. But genuinely, this acts like sometimes like a powder for me, especially in these winter months because I have the dry skin. But again, if you have oily skin, I don't understand when I see people use a fluffy brush to set their face if they have oily skin. You have to realize that you have to stop or prevent that oil from coming up as fast. So you have to use something more dense so that you're really pressing it on your skin. So for example, if I could recommend any brush to purchase and I'm not one to, you know, use a ton of different products all the time. I really stick to what I like and what I know. It would be the Makeup by Mario. I believe this is the F1. No. I don't remember what the number is, but it's the double-ended brush with the smaller foundation or concealer end. This is a phenomenal brush for any stage of makeup that you're in, and it works for any step of makeup. So I'm gonna take the smaller side with my Maybelline pressed powder, once again, make sure I don't have any creases anywhere built up. And then I'll go in with this powder. Make sure you're not using too much because you can always build it up. And I'm just going to start pressing it right underneath the eye and the nose area. You have to realize though that even if you are a professional makeup artist or a beginner, creasing is inevitable. It's just a matter of how long or how fast it's going to happen. Yes, there is a right way to set your under eyes and there is correct techniques and correct products for your skin type, but it is going to happen by the end of the day, of course. We all have lines, we all have some sort of movement throughout the day, whether it's smiling or frowning. Product is going to build up in that area, so don't, don't set your expectations too high, especially when you see these celebrity makeup looks. For anyone with oily skin, now is when I would go in with a little bit of baking, specifically on a powder puff. You can use a beauty blender, but a powder puff, because it's dry itself, it's really going to cement it on your skin. I'm finally gonna go in with some bronzer. The whole point of this look is to achieve that really angelic, open-eyed makeup. The focus is primarily on the blush, and the shimmer of the eye. So the bronzer is mainly there to create a light veil all over your skin so that you don't look super washed out. So I'm just gonna go in with a tad bit of my Hoola bronzer right underneath that blush that we initially applied. And actually, if you have more fair skin, this is the makeup for you because I typically don't like to go in with a lot of bronzer or contour with my fair skin clients either because you're trying to bring life back to the skin. You're not just trying to make it a different skin tone or color with bronzer. And that liveliness comes from, for example, if you pinch your cheeks. So the bronzer's all over the skin. Hit it a little bit on the nose as well, just to add some consistency to the look. All right, next up is setting spray. I have a love-hate relationship with setting spray because it does make your skin look beautiful for an hour. My favorite combo, like, if I'm doing bridesmaids or clients that have to have their makeup on for a really long time is the Charlotte Tilbury setting spray with the one size on till dawn. If you have oily skin, I would only, only, only focus this and if it's per request to have a glowy look on the outer perimeters right here. But it makes the makeup melt into your skin. Yeah, but you have to realize that if you have oily skin, the oils are gonna come up to the surface inevitably and make your makeup look better throughout the day. So you wanna extend that time by not using as much setting spray on the center at least. So we'll spray lightly along the perimeter. I finished off the look with the lipstick. I went in with the NYX Line Loud Lip Liner, first in the shade Total Baller. This pulls very warm and dark. And then to lighten it and add a little bit of pinkiness to the lips, I went in with the Lippy Stick from ColourPop in the shade Parker. A little bit more lightness in the center, I went in with the Fortune Cookie Butter Gloss from NYX. And this is what it looks like. I find it's very interesting for a lot of the makeup looks that I grabbed um, inspo from. She has a warm tone nude lip, which I think is very interesting with the bubblegum, you know, super light cheeks. But it seems to work. It looks beautiful. I went in with a little bit more gloss. This is from e.l.f. This is not necessary, but this is Champagne Glam. But this is the finished look. I hope you guys enjoyed today's tutorial. If you have any other celeb recreations that you want me to do, just leave them down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Bye.